The officials in tonight's game are Brian Griffin, Tom Hoplin, and Ken Bellamy. And introducing the coaching staff for the visiting Tigers of Tenafly, head coach Jeff Kohler, and his assistants Eric Quaranti, Justin Balzano, John Cornett, and Oren Fox. And for the Patriots, head coach Kevin Grimes and his assistants Todd Green, Kevin Milak, and Matt Aquino. And now for the starting lineups for the visiting Tigers. Senior guard number four, Dean Kuberski, number four. Junior guard number two, Dennis Kardonsky, number two. Senior forward number 15, Antonio Bonilla, number 15. Junior forward number 21, Alon Abudi, number 21. And junior center number five, Johnny Engbazo, number five. Guard number 21, Joey Bellar, number 21. Senior guard number three, Justin Wills, number three. Junior guard number five, Jake Bellar, number five. Senior forward number 23, Jason Modak, number 23. And senior forward, number 11, Joe Cerrone, number 11. By the way, we're talking Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you now please rise as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Welcome to the Gifford Gymnasium here in Wayne, New Jersey on this Monday night as your hometown Wayne Hills Patriots take on the Tenafly Tigers. I'm Jared Paul alongside Dylan Orrin King. Dylan, I think we're in some, for some a lot of action today. Well, a lot of action. I think that's a little bit of an understatement, don't you think? I mean, just think of the win that this, these boys just came off of, you know, making pretty much Wayne Hills history the first ever county championship. I mean, that's got to be amazing for Coach Grimes to have under his belt and for these guys to have under their belt as well. Yeah, it truly is a great accomplishment for a lot of these guys, especially, you know, a lot of them being seniors, go out with at least a county chip and, you know, this being the state tournament, we'll see if they could win this game, hopefully go pretty far in the state tournament. That'd be pretty cool to see. Hills actually beat Patterson Kennedy 55-51 in the overtime thriller over at Wayne Valley. That was truly an incredible game. The other team coming in today, the Tigers, they're a pretty decent team. They're coming into this game. They have a record of 14 and 11. Their last game was a loss to Mawa, 48-50, as Wayne Hills loses the tip. It's taken quickly now by Tenafly at the top. Finding his man in the corner, guarded by Jake Belli. 
A lot of ball action back and forth so far for Tenafly. Guarded now at the top by Joe Cerrone. Jump shot and unable to hit. Offensive rebound though, and it looks like he's gonna be called for an up and down. That was number five, Johnny Agabazo. Yeah, you know, I was able to talk to Coach Grimes beforehand, and he absolutely mentioned that Joe Cerrone and Joey Belli are going to be two players to watch in this game, especially because they're covering two of Tenafly's best players, so they're going to be essential to this game. Yeah, stopping the other team's best player is going to be essential to winning this game. Now we have Justin Wills at the top. Looks like Coach Grimes is calling a play. Belli on the ball now, kicks it to Jake. Wills kicks it inside to Modak, back to Belli. Belli, pump shot, and put up by Wills, and unable to hit, rebounded by J-Mo. Looks like he's called for a travel. So far, six minutes, 48 seconds, still 0-0. Zero, zero. You know, this early on, you can't really tell if that's good for Wayne Hills or not, but once the first points are put on the board, maybe we'll see a momentum shift. Dennis Kardinsky on the ball now. Kicked inside and put up. Nice jump shot over there from number 15. Antonio Benilla. 2-0, first score of the game. Belli has the ball inside. Taken down pretty hard. Looks like it'll be a turnover for Hills. You know, I don't really know if I agree with that call, but the ref saw what he saw. Yeah. You know, maybe if I was the ref, I'd call something else. Looked like he called them for a walk. I mean, they were both, you know, grappling for the ball. Belli definitely took a couple steps. Pretty true, pretty true, but I, don't, I still don't know. Taken inside again. Unable to hit, though, and out of bounds. Again, that was number 15, Antonio Benilla, up with the shot. It's 2 nothing. very early in this game as Joey Belli kicks it to his brother Jake, taking it up the court now. Joey Belli left wide open. He kicks it outside to Wills. Wills takes it inside. Nice pass to Joe Cerrone. Joe Cerrone goes up and in with it. It's a tie game, 2-2. Under six minutes left. Tenafly getting set up pretty quick, though. Number four, Dean Kuberski at the top now. Kuberski kicks it. Bunch of ball movement. Now in the corner, guarded by Jake Belli. Cerrone able to strip the ball away. Cerrone taking it down the court now. Takes it himself to the layup and unable to hit the layup is Joe Cerrone. Pretty unfortunate there, you know. Maybe if he converts that, maybe he begins a streak. You know, really sets some points up on the board and takes the lead. Kardonsky kicks it to the corner. Three point taken and unable to hit. Looks like they're gonna call a push. You know, one thing that Coach Grimes told me is that Tenafly is very methodical. They're very quick paced when it comes to their offense and defense, but they take it in their own pace. They take a slow time, but they know who's open. They know when to pass. They know when to take shots, and they know when to be conservative. So this is going to be a really good team for Hills. And that's how you play winning basketball. Missed shot by JMO right there, taken down the court quickly by Tenafly. A lot of baseline action from this Tenafly team so far. Baby jumper taken and hit by number 21, Alan Abudi. It's quickly 4-2, Tenafly on top. Modak has the ball at the top now. Cerrone kicks it to Jake Belli. Belli takes a dribble, kicks it to his brother Joey. Joey inside and up, and hitting with a nice move inside is Joey Belli, tied at four. And there's Joey Belli's first points of the night. And you know, honestly, this is a kid that's got a lot of potential. He's already been showing it a lot this season, and you know what? He, if uh, Of all the people on Wayne Hill's team, he's gonna be the guy that I expect to carry. And up with the shot, unable to hit is number five. Now Belli taking it down the court. Nice crossover, kicks it to Jake Belli. Jake Belli up and unable to hit on the three. Looks like they'll say it's off of Tenafly. Some nice ball instincts from Joe Cerrone underneath the rim. J-Mo kicks it to Jake Belli. 
Now Joey up on top again, kicks it inside to JMO. JMO with a jumper and hits. They saw a jumper from JMO. Really good, you know. So far, we've got a lot of points coming from multiple people for, on Wayne Hill's team. This is so much from really good form tonight, so honestly, I'm expecting big things coming into the later points of this game. Kubarski kicks it to Kardonski. Kardonski kicks up, put up with a shot, and not hitting, taken down by Jake Joey Belli. Joey Belli now, quick in transition, puts it up. Looks like it's stripped by Tenafly. Coach Grimes liking the contact underneath the rim. Joey Bella is trying to initiate. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? At this point, sure, it was knocked out. But you know what? As long as it goes into Wayne Hill's hands, I'm pretty content with that. Exactly. Always want to have possession as Jake Bella's pass is tipped. Almost recovered by Kardonsky, unable to get it in time. But see, there you see it again. Wayne Hill's preventing a fly from being able to get possession of the ball, retaining possession, and getting another shot. Yeah, winning this basketball game, definitely want to need to turn over the ball as least times as possible. Seeking a turnover, ball turned over, and looks like it's recovered by Cerrone. Cerrone jumps on top of it, Modak on top of it now. Timeout by Coach Grimes. Looked like a little bit of a fumble drill. <laughs> Coming back to those good old football days, wish those would come back sooner, but you know, so far this Wayne Hill team has done pretty well. You know, they're up by only two points, but they've really shown that they're coming into this game with a good mentality. Yeah, and you know, we were saying earlier in the game that, you know, coming off such a high winning against uh, Kennedy the other day, it might be hard coming into this game, you know, a lot of confidence, or maybe a little overconfident, but looks like this Hills team has really come to play. I mean, they have the lead so far. It's 6-4, just under three minutes left in the first quarter. I think Coach Grimes' team is definitely playing well. We've seen this team has definitely done well coming out of the gates. Well, you know, I, one of the, another one of the things I talked with Coach Grimes was the mentality that this basketball team is going to come in with. And he said that the motivation is through the roof. That win last night put them into an overdrive state. And they're going to look for the win tonight. There's no other way to say it. They're looking to win. They don't want this feeling to end. They just want to keep going as long as they've got the momentum. That's right, Dylan. And now Joe Cerrone on the ball now. Cerrone looking for open man, kicks it to Modak. Modak hands off to Belli. Belli trying to create some offense. Belli with a couple moves, takes a three, and in and out, Belli's shot. Hit away by Joe Cerrone, man. Joe Cerrone has been having himself a pretty good past couple of games. He's been instilled into the starting five, and he's just played well on offense and defense. Dude's just balling out. Now taken up top by Kardonsky. Kardonsky kicks it, pass inside. Looks like they're gonna say it's out on Wayne Hills. Number 21, Alan Abudi tries to inbound it. Abudi kicks it, guarded in the corner now by Belli. Open shot by Abudi and hitting three pointer. Seven, six, ten to fly on top with just about two minutes left to go in the first quarter. Wills now, taking the ball, kicks it to Belli. Belli looks like he's looking for a play. Belli kicks it to Gilmore. To Wills, back inside to Jamo. He's doubled, but is able to kick it to Belli. High pass to Wills. A lot of ball movement for Hills. Joey Belli takes a three and not able to hit. Rebounded now. Taken down by the court by Bonzo. Now taken inside pass. A booty on the ball now. Hands off and a three. Not hit. Rebounded now by Joey Bella. Joey Bella taking a quick down in transition and Wills hits three, unable to hit. You know, this has been some great back and forth so far. Of course, not a lot of points on the board, but this is definitely coming down to skill in terms of these two teams. And definitely coming late in this game, this is going to be an, a great game. I can just feel it. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a close one if we've seen so far. Just under a minute now, still one point lead, 7-6 for Tenafly. A booty on the ball now. Kicks it back to the point guard, who loses his handle, guarded by Belli now. Oh 
still a lot of passes from Tenafly. This team is definitely really good chemistry-wise. They've been passing a lot. Looks like they're going to be holding for the last shot, though. Just about 25 seconds left in the first quarter. Got number 15 on the ball right now. That's Antonio Benilla, guarded by Gilmore at the top. Just under 10 seconds left, guarded by Cerrone. Kicked inside to the corner. Jamo contests the shot, unable to hit though. Ball's corralled by Belli, and it'll be the end of the first quarter. A lot of action so far. 7 6, Tenafly leading. We'll be back after a short break. Hello and welcome back as we bring you action. Wayne Hills versus Tenafly. The start of the second quarter, Hills down by one. Pretty close game so far. What do you think Hills needs to do in order to come out with a win in this game, Dylan? Hills, you know, honestly, they've been playing pretty good. I, I can't say that much, honestly. I mean, one thing I can say for Tenafly, they need to stop dropping the ball in their own, in Wayne Hills' area, but for Hills, they just need to keep playing with, you know, the same aggression they've come in with. And a wide open shot by Jake Belli, just a little short. I agree with you, Dylan. The last game I saw them play, you know, last week, there was a lot of aggression coming out of the gates. Wayne Hills, they were just playing really hard, really aggressive. They're still playing pretty hard, but, you know, last game we saw a lot of results. They definitely had a large lead where, you know, they're going to the second quarter and they're down. Looks like yeah. there's an injury. That was Dean Kuberski. Looks like his shoulder's bothering him. He's got that taped up. Or is it his wrist? But yeah, absolutely. As I was saying, you know, if Hills can come into this portion of the game with a little bit more aggression, get a good lead before the half, then they will be in a, a pretty good position to really take over this game and hopefully end it in, in a less overtime-like fashion like the last game. That's right. Hopefully they can end it in four quarters because, man, that game had me standing on edge. See the ball controlled up top now by Tenafly. It's Max Wiener on the ball. Pass inside now. Guarded by Modak. Spin move. Looks like they're going to call him for a travel. It's Johnny Engbazo. Belli taking up the court now. Long pass to Jake now. He's going to take it inside. Kicks it to Modak. Modak takes a jumper and not able to hit. Rebounded now by Gilmore. Gilmore puts up a shot. Tough shot, though. Rebounded now by Jake Belli. Trying to keep it inbounds. Unable to do so. Turns it over. Taken now by Wiener. Wiener kicks it. Taken inside. A floater and off the glass and in. That's number 15, Antonio Benilla. 6-9. Now take a good look, close look at Hills. You can actually see that they're upping the tempo. They're getting faster. They're moving the ball quicker. You know, they really want to get some inside points, but they really want to get their guys open for an outside shot. Gilmore with a corner three. Rebounded now by Wills. Wills puts up a quick jump shot and hits. Justin Wills able to cut it down to a one-point deficit, 9-8. Well, you know, speak of the devil as he shall appear. As soon as I started talking about it, they immediately tried for it. Couldn't make the three, but definitely could make the two. Yeah, definitely want to see them hit their jump shots. Last time, a lot of their points came from inside. Didn't really see a lot of threes until the end of the game. Justin Wills, man, did he go off. He just hit three after three. Looks like they're going to call Jake Belli for a reach-in. Now, something for Tenafly that Hill should be able to prioritize on fairly easily. In fact, we probably saw Jake do it there. Johnny Angbazo, number five. He appears to be the tempo setter for Tenafly. So if they shut him down, they might actually be able to affect Tenafly's game. Yeah, he's definitely a large part of their offense. He's, you know, scored a lot of their points. He's definitely doing pretty well on the board. You see right there, he tipped the ball right to his teammate. He takes it along the baseline now. Looks like they're going to say he stepped out of bounds. So Angbazo, definitely one of their better players. Two turnovers right along the baseline. Well, I mean, you could even see it 
when he came up with the rebound, the team didn't move until he got the ball. So really, I think for Hills, their number one priority, get him out of the game and just make sure, see exactly what I'm talking about. And Joe Cerrone with a kind of careless pass, he was able to take that out of midair, Tenafly has the ball again. Another floater and able to hit. 11-8, Tenafly again taking the lead on top. But even more proof to what I'm saying, if you're taking Basel out of the game, you can win this, but they weren't able to do it that time, but and Justin Wells with a corner three, and he's able to hit three-pointer. Tied at 11 now with under five minutes to go in the second quarter. An excellent job there by Wills. But yeah. really, what I'm saying is holding true. You gotta take Mbazo out of the game, and if you're not able to do it, you're gonna lose their tempo. They definitely wanna maybe put an extra body on him underneath. Looks like called for a foul now is Hill, so the he'll go to the line. It's gonna be number 15, Antonio Benilla, who is going to take two shots at the charity stripe. Pretty sure it's our first uh, set of free throw attempts this night, isn't it? It is actually, so let's see if he's able to make it. And he's able to hit the first free throw, Benilla is. Last game we saw Kennedy, I'd say three-fourths offense came from the free throw line, and you know, we've not seen that this night, so it's pretty good to see, you know, teams working hard to get those buckets. He hits the second free throw. We know another guy on Tenafly's team to watch. He seemed to put up a lot of points so far, so as well as getting him just away from the bucket, if they can really keep him out of the paint, by the looks of things, Hill should be in a pretty good position. Belli with a long three. He's knocked down. Gilmore gets the rebound, puts it up. Joe Cerrone with another put up. A lot of action back and forth now. Fast break by Tenafly, taken inside. Jumper and hitting again. Vanilla has been the main man on offense along with, man, Vanilla, another basket. It's turnover after turnover for Hills. Coach Grimes wants a timeout. 17-11, Tenafly on top. But yeah, absolutely. It looks like Vanilla has pretty much almost taken over. You could even see from that, he got the ball away from the Wayne Hills offensive player and was able to go up for a second basket. Pretty much he got two in a row. Really, Wayne Hills needs to improve on that. They can't let that happen. That sort of sloppy play is what's going to lose them this game. And you definitely don't want to see that happen. I mean, basketball, it's all about possession and making your buckets and making, you know, high percentage shots. And so far, we really have not seen that. I mean, some careless turnovers, I definitely think that could have been avoided. But, no, it's only a six-point deficit. We've seen worse. I mean, going into the last two minutes of the game the other day, I mean, they're down by six, and look what happened. I mean, it seems very special, and, you know, Coach Grimes is a very special coach, so I think that they're definitely going to be able to overcome this deficit. Well, Wayne Hill seems has always been known to come up to overcome deficits, but the thing is that my feeling is you shouldn't put yourself in that deficit in the first place. I mean, we see it with the football team all the time where they're able to come up from seven, 14-point deficits, even sometimes 21-point deficits, but it shouldn't happen all the time. And really, I think it's kind of almost a bad habit but if you're able to break it, that's even better for you. Yeah, it's definitely a lot easier to be playing on top than coming from behind. A lot of passes at the top now. Joey Belli kicks it to his brother Jake. Wells now guarded. Kick to Joey Belli. Joey Belli kicks it out to Jake Belli. Belli takes it inside, puts it up, and in. Jake Belli able to hit. 13-17, four-point deficit still for Hills. Wiener's gonna take it down the court now. Guard at top now by Cerrone. Wiener on the ball again. Vanilla, guarded, takes a jump shot, contested, unable to hit. Bodak able to get the rebound though. Able to give it to Belli. Belli now takes it inside, a couple steps, and nice move by Belli. Looks like a timeout's gonna be called. Just over three minutes left. 17, Tenafly, 15, Patriots. Now let's talk about something Hills is gonna need to take notice of. Joey and Jake Belli, of course, you know, the two Belli brothers. And they've been doing amazing so far, but something I've noticed is that whenever one of them gets the ball, Vanilla will actively move to whoever goes to the ball. So if they give Joey Belli the ball, Bonilla will switch from Jake Belli and will move to double team uh, Joey Belli. But when Jake has the ball, Bonilla just goes in to single man him. 
So if they take notice of that, they could really abuse the matchup with Jake Belli and be able to possibly sneak him into the paint for two, for more and more of what we just saw. And that's definitely a look that Coach Grimes is probably going to want to, you know, use this game. I mean, anything that puts Hills at an advantage, I think Coach Grimes is definitely going to see and use. We'll see if that happens as Joey Belli, Wiener on the ball now. <clears throat> Will is playing some tough defense. Taken inside by Benilla. Contested jump shot. He airballs it. Rebounded though and put up and in. That's Ang Bazo. So Ang Bazo, Benilla, been, you know, the stars of this game so far. Wills takes a three. In and out. High rebound though. Jake Belli able to take it down. Kicked inside to Modak. Modak with a jumper. Unable to hit though. Ang Bazo got that board. Wiener guarded up top. Sorry, Dylan. No problem, no problem. Wiener now kicks it to Vanilla. Vanilla guarded pretty well by Jake Belli. Inside to Engbazo. He takes a jump shot over Cerrone and hits. See, now we see Vanilla taking a back seat, but we see Engbazo coming back up. It's one or the other. You either see Engbazo scoring ports or Vanilla scoring ports scoring points and honestly neither of them should be scoring points I want none of them to I want the Hills defense to shut them down that would definitely be ideal as Jake Bell airballs the ball 21-15 with a minute 30 left put up and in by Benilla 23-15 10 to fly on top Hills just looks really tired out there I mean they played a really long tough game only six guys in rotation last game I think these guys look a little tired Nice dribble move. Looks like they're calling for a foul. Hey, you know what? I wouldn't blame them if they were a little bit tired, but, you know, it's still a game. It's still the game of basketball. You're coming into it. You're hoping to win. And you've got the motivation boost from the big win last night. You know, I hope that they're going to be able to play up to their strength, but if they're not going to be able to, then that's going to be a pretty bad thing for Wayne Hills. Yeah, they definitely want to see, you know, guys like Wells and Belli and even Cerrone get open looks. Now Jake Belli looks like it's going to be called for a kick ball. Definitely looked like it was turned over. Lucky call, lucky break. Well, you know, you obviously saw Jake Belli. He flubbed the pass a little bit, but you know what? Hills got lucky. It's exactly like you said. Hills got lucky. But how long is that luck going to last? How long is that looking to last for? I mean, really? We'll see if Hills can get a little luck of their own. Under a minute now, still 23-15. Belli actually hits, it'll be 23-17. 45 seconds left in the second quarter. Taken now by Wiener, guarded by Wills. Got a defense chant going on by the Wayne Hills faithful. Looks like they're gonna hold for the last shot. Call for a foul now, Cerrone. Ang Bazo generating contact. 10 fly coach really getting into it, you know. I'm pretty sure I know why. He just wants to make sure that they can secure this lead going into the half. They definitely want to be coaching the winning side at half. Kardonsky kicks it now to Vanilla. Vanilla kicks it to Wiener. Wiener guarded pretty well by Wells. Kicks it inside to Khan. Khan with a jump shot, and he hits. The man with the flow able to hit. One second left. Belli puts up a last second heave off the front of the rim. So at the end of two, 25 10 to fly, 17 hills. Dylan, what do you think going into halftime, Hill needs to drop in order to come out with the win in this game? Well, I said a lot of things before. I said, first of all, you need to take, uh, well, first of all, you need to take Vanilla out of the game, obviously. Vanilla has been a key player this whole time, but Engbazo has pretty much been the tempo man for this Tenafly team. So honestly, you pretty much have to take them both out. And that's very hard to do if you're this Wayne Hills team. Taking two players out of the game is much difficult than just taking one. But since Tenafly has two guys who can equally score just as many points as, them, as their whole team combined, and then also set the tempo for their whole team. 
that's very hard for Wayne Hills to do on top of what their Tenafly is doing defensively. They're switching Vanilla between Jake and Joey Belli so that Joey Belli is always double teamed. And then Jake Pelli always has the single man against Vanilla, who does have the height advantage. Honestly, I think we need to see more of Jake Belli. I think he needs to abuse the fact that he is shorter, but he can equally drive just as good as his brother. And I think we need to see more of him in this game. I agree with you, Dylan. I think that he could definitely be a key to this game, you know, going into the second half and coming away with a win. What I really think is important is they need to find some sort of mismatch and take advantage of that mismatch. Last game we saw they played, there's a center, you know, he wasn't too good at ball handling. We saw them strip him inside, you know. Got to find that weak link that, you know, Tenafly has. Obviously, we haven't really seen too much of a weak link from them so far in this game but you find that weak link and you abuse it i mean that's what we did last game we came out the win i think coach Grant gonna go into the locker room and say you know this is their weak link we need to go after it and we're gonna do that well we'll see if they take that kind of approach again at the end of two it's 25 10 of fly 17 wayne hills we'll see you after halftime Hello and welcome back to the Gifford Gymnasium. As at the beginning of the third quarter, Tenafly on top, 25. Wayne Hills trailing, 17. So we're down by eight, but it's really not that much of a deficit, Dylan. Again, you know, we'll be able to see if Wayne Hills is able to overcome this deficit or not. Well, you know what? If Hills can come back in with the right mentality of that, that was just the first half. We've got two more halves, and they can just keep playing at a really good tempo. Or did I say two more halves? I'm sorry, one more half. But if they can play at a really good tempo here, set the standard, get the momentum going early, they can come in and have a really good half. And honestly, that's what I'm hoping for. This is stakes. They won the county championship, but if I'm a fan of Wayne Hills, and trust me, I am, I want to see us go deep into stakes, and I want to see us get out of this first round. Yeah, this team has definitely reached uncharted heights. I mean, never seen them even play in a county championship game, let alone win it against a really powerhouse team like Kennedy. We'll see if they could go pretty far in states. That would be really nice to see, you know. And a really fantastic season on a good note. Wills called for a foul immediately at top. What Hills is going to want to do is try to cut down on the turnovers, cut down on the fouls. Don't want to give them any baskets that, you know, are too easy. Well, really, they need to move into possession. They need to just hold on to the ball. They need to shoot as many times as they can, try to make it. But they need to be smart about it. They need to be able to make it if they do shoot it. Double now. Able to kick it out, though. Wiener sidesteps, taken inside now. A bunch of passes. No Good no call underneath. He definitely initiated the contact. Pass to Wills in the corner. Wills not able to hit the three-pointer. Pretty unfortunate there from the corner, but you know we've seen him make quite a bit in this game, so hopefully he'll be able to make something farther down the line. Yeah, he's definitely you know not shooting the way he usually does. When he shoots the three-point line, generally it's you know going in. Now, Belli guarding Wiener up top. Wiener able to take the edge, puts up a jump shot, not able to hit. Rebounded though. Tanafi has possession. Kicked inside now. Looks like it'll be off of Tenafly. Again, another turnover along the baseline for a... <clears throat> Man, these guys' hard names to pronounce. Anyways, this is a turnover. Angbazo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looking down at the stashy, it's like, man, so hard. Forgot some of these guys' names. Belli is guarded now. Wills takes it inside, fade away, and not able to hit. Rebounded, though, by Jake Belli. Jake Belli kicks it to his brother. Joey, couple size up moves, spin move inside. They're going to call him. Looks like they're going to call him for a grab. Still be Wayne Hill's possession. So a little over six minutes left. 25, 10 of five, 17, Wayne Hills. Thrown up top to J-Mo. Belli kicks it inside to Modak. Modak with another jump shot and in. Modak's jumper's been looking pretty nice this game. 
Yeah, too bad we don't see him more often. Honestly, defeated to Modak, he probably could make a difference in this game. Looks like Kardonsky got away with the carry. Coach Grimes definitely not happy with that missed call. Cerrone guarding, able to hit on the jump shot though, is Benilla. He's out of himself a game. 19-27, Tedify saw up top. Joey Belli takes up the middle and in. 21-27, six point deficit for Wayne Hills now. Back and forth and back and forth. Both teams just trying to get something going here. You know, they both are scoring a lot, but Tenderfly has the lead. Hills just needs to be a lot more consistent with their scoring and just needs to keep it going and prevent Tenderfly from scoring. And if they can do that, they win. Wiener makes Will slip. Ngbazo with a jump shot, unable to hit. Corralled now by Belli. Belli taking it down the court. Kicks it to Wills. Wills with a wide open three. Not able to hit. Looks like there will be a foul though. Wayne Hills will have possession still. Still only a six point deficit. It's definitely something Wayne Hills can come back with. Just a little under five minutes left to go in the third quarter. It's a yeah, but you know what? That's uh, pretty sure that's Will's second missed shot just in this quarter. Yeah, definitely don't want to see that. Nice little find right there by Will's. Finds Jake Belli. Now we're talking about the, the momentum game. Seems like Wayne Hills definitely got some momentum. Now cutting the, the deficit to four. Definitely want to get the crowd involved into this game. Yeah, absolutely. If the Wayne Hills crowd can really get hyped up in this one, they could pr probably cause a difference considering their numbers to 10 of flies. But if anything, if you think about it so far, both these teams have been consistent in one thing, and that's pretty much been scoring. If Hills can dominate at least that department, they could probably be able to tie it up. But the real difference is going to come in on who's going to play the better defense. Whoever can get the better defense first is going to be the one that takes away this game. Like they say, defense wins championships, and you know that's definitely a motto that you're, you want your team to follow. Inbounded now, taken up the court by Ang Bazo. Ang Bazo guarded by Modak. Vanilla now guarded by Cerrone. Does a good job getting past that screen. Wiener now guarded by Wills. Wills. Vanilla guarded by Cerrone. A lot of back and forth between these Tenify players. They definitely have a lot of chemistry, a lot of ball movement. Now it looks like the Wayne Hills bench getting into it a little bit. Definitely good to see those guys get into the games. And he stepped on the baseline. Turnover. Now that's really good for Wayne Hills, but you know what? This bench is getting into it where the crowd, they've been pretty silent. They did have a a defense chant earlier, but you know what? Their bench is getting into it, just making this game a whole lot easier for Wayne Hills. Definitely did. You know, they really have played relatively turnover free basketball. Definitely looking for a Justin Wills three right there. He saw the entire bench just get up. Give it a Wills. He's wide open right now. Yeah, it may look like that, but. Looks like Wiener's now actually Wills getting locked down. with a three-pointer and rebounded by Gilmore, put up and in again another attempt. Gilmore, 25-27, two-point deficit for the Patriots now. Took a couple times there, but you know what? Gilmore got it in, and as long as they can put some points on the board and keep their defense as solid as it has been so far, they'll be able to take this game away pretty co contently. Yeah, another turnover now. Able to get it those Tenafly. They're gonna call him for a walk. Better pack a suitcase for that kind of travel. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know what? This is perfect for Wayne Hills. This opportunity, you get a two-point shot, you tie the game. You get a three-point shot, you take the lead. That's exactly what Wayne Hills wanted right there. Yeah, I think tying up the game here or getting a lead, you know, definitely get the crowd into it, the team into it. Nice inside look to Modak and one. Are you 
kidding me, Modak. Nice play by him. Wayne Hills Patriots football MVP and Wayne Hills Patriots basketball MVP coming in right there. He's definitely been the main offensive contributor today for Hills. I mean, he's playing pretty well. And, you know, that's a very difficult and one shot. He's able to put it in. Modak sinks the free throw. Really good for Windows here. They take the lead by one point. Three minutes left in this quarter. But if Wayne Hills can keep up their defense. Benilla with a jump shot and it bounces in. It's a pretty lucky bounce. See what they call it. A little bit of confusion. They're gonna say it's a basket. Looks like the score now is 29-28. Kind of fly back on top. Pretty unfortunate there. Got the lead, immediately lost it, but still it's a one point deficit from an eight point deficit. I'd much rather have this one than the eight. And if anything, looks like the refs right now are actually talking it over. Yeah, I'm not really sure what happened there. It looks like, it looks like they're, Looks like they're gonna take away the basket. Not really sure what's going on here. A lot of confusion. Well, hold on. As soon as the tennis flight coach jumped up at the call, the ref immediately said to hold on, so. Looks like it'll stand as we originally called it. Looks like the ref is explaining to Grimes what's going on. Although I will say though, one of the refs did say it was one shot, so the confusion is absolutely gar guaranteed to happen, but you know, hopefully it's just one shot. I have no idea though. This could go either way. So they're saying the basket's good. Looks like there's still gonna be a foul though. We'll see what they call it. I don't think it was a shooting foul, was it? I mean, I guess the foul happened while the ball was in the air. Looks like they'll just give it possession to Tenafly. After a little bit of confusion, play will resume. Jake Bell, I play in some pretty tough defense, kicked inside now, and Gozi puts it up. 31 28. Belli getting a screen from Modak, kicks it to Jake Belli. Comes fake, he puts it up, and Unable to connect on the and one. Gonna go to the line though. But that's a really good job by Jake Belli there. Able to drive it in with such power, drawing the foul. Really good job there by Jake. Gifford Gymnasium gets pretty quiet when the Patriots are at the free throw line. Clanks the first one off the front of the rim. Couldn't make the first one. Let's see if he makes the second. Shot up and in. Jake Ballet able to connect. Cuts it to two points. 31-29. Taking up the court relatively quick. Almost turned over. Joey Bella got a hand on that ball. Vanilla kicks it to the corner now. Vanilla, bunch of moves. Kicks it across the court. Khan with the ball now. Kicks it inside. Another outside, a lot of passing. Some tough defense from the Patriots here, unable to get a look. A lot of passing, shot up and unable to hit. Rebounded now by Cerrone. Taking up the court quickly now by Joey Belli. Belli takes a three and planks off the rim, but looks like will say it's off the Patriots. Booty inbounds it now. It's Kardonsky taking it down the court. It's gonna pass it back to N. Bazo. N. Bazo now, looking for an open man. Kardonsky takes it against their own. They're gonna double him. Open shot for N. Bazi and unable to hit the three. Rebounded though by Joe Cerrone. Inline pass to Gilmore. Gilmore misses the layup. 
and fouled underneath the rim as Wills. Nice second effort by Wills. Looks like Grimes is looking for a shooting foul. Ref saying ball came loose in the air. So the ball will be inbounded now by the Patriots. Gilmore going to inbound it. You can still see Coach Grimes arguing for the two. Looks like he isn't going to get it, but he's hopefully this will be able to do something. He's definitely not getting the foul calls he's really wanted in this game. Wills with the pull-up three off the front of the rim. Rebounded, though, by Jake Bell. I hacked underneath and won! Okay. Great job there by Jake getting the and one. You know, we talked about it. He needs to get into this game. He's turned up. Just like that, tied 31-31. We'll see if he can hit this free throw to convert on the old-fashioned three-point play. Looks like the whistle was called before he took the free throw. Bella shot up and again missed. Kept in. Oh, that was a close one. Looks like they're going to say Cerrone was out of bounds. You know, if they just could have made it even a second earlier, that would have been a great for Wayne Hills. Well, just like that, no matter what happened on that last possession, 31-31. Karnowski kicks it inside. Contested shot by Cerrone. Modak has the ball now. Going to give it to Jake Belli. Under a minute left to go. Tie game, third quarter. Wills now getting a screen from Modak. Gives it to Jake Belli. Kicks it to Gilmore in the corner. Gilmore gives it to Wills. 33 seconds left. See what happens as the clock hits 30. Modak now with the ball. Hands it off to Wills. Looks like they're gonna say Wills is gonna hold the ball. They want the last shot. Wills, stuck in the corner, gives it to Jake Belli. Jake Belli, couple moves on Kardonsky. Jake Belli kicks it to Wills. Clock's at five. Wills is looking for the basket. Couple crossovers, and he puts it up. Wills, unable to hit. So at the end of three, 31-31, game tied. We'll see you after a short break. Hello and welcome back. The end of the, the beginning of the first first quarter. It's 31-31. Got eight minutes of play left, Dylan. What do you think is going to be the turnout at the end of these eight minutes? Well, you know what? Since it is the first quarter, you know, we might see a little bit more time. Nah, I'm just I'm just messing with you here. But you know, one thing Hills definitely does need to do in this game is that they need to keep their defense consistent. They've only got eight minutes. They need to show up, dominant on offense, dominant on defense. Keep the ball moving. Keep the ball going, keep the tempo up. They could come away with a win here if they're able to keep those things in check. I think we need to see a couple big shots. Not gonna make any bold predictions this time, but you know, I think that we will see a hero come out, you know, hit a couple big shots. We'll see who it is. Belli with a nice couple set of moves. He's stripped by Wiener. Wiener takes it inside, pass up and in. First basket of the fourth quarter. It's 33-31. Belli now on the ball. Kicks it to Gilmore. Gilmore guarded. Kicks it to Wills. Wills pass it inside to Modak. Modak couple moves. Casts it out. Wide open Jake Belli. Belli hits the three. 34-33. Hills on top. Now that's how you call football. I mean basketball, but... <laughs> We're both messing up a little bit today, but you know what? Jake Belli, either way, coming in dominant. Nice backdoor pass put in by Wiener. 35-34, back and forth. 
between these two teams. Joey Belli kicks it to Wills. Belli takes a contested three, unable to hit on that though. And foul call by Jake Belli. Really good job here by Wayne Hills. I think I figured out why I said football. I was thinking about how Jason Modak has been so effective in this game. And, you know, but he's been really coming out, shining tonight. Jason Modak, he's been all over, right in the middle of the paint. And pretty much all of his shots have been on point. He's been really clutch so far. Yeah, Modak definitely, you know, is a big name on the football field. Definitely, you know, a big key factor into this Wayne Hills team. He's great on the boards. He's great on defense. Really don't see a lot of looks up for him on offense sides, like, you know, really in the paint. He's did a couple jumpers and had a bunch of nice looks today. Shout out to him. Bonnell on the ball now, guarded by Cerrone. Taking it inside now, bunch of passes. Jump shot up and unable to hit. Looks like they're gonna call a foul against Tenafly. Looks like that call really could have gone any way. Both those guys went down pretty hard. You know, I saw the Tenafly player go down. I saw Jake Belli go down. Could have been an injury, but they called it in Jake's favor. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll absolutely take it. Oh, for sure. And, you know, with seven fouls right now, Belli will go to the line. So, you know, hopefully two free points. We'll see what happens. Belli puts it up and in. Able to tie the game at 35. It's a little over six minutes to go here in the fourth quarter at the Gifford Gymnasium. Well, he's got one more to tie it, or one more to break the tie. Belli able to break the tie. 36-35, Hills back on top. Fast break now into the corner. Nice steal by Jake Belli. Jake Belli all alone with a layup and in. Jake Belli making moves. I said he needs to come into this game and he needs to dominate, and I was right. I don't know, something about being a Wayne Hills announcer, I guess you know, tell the future. <laughs> hey, well, you know what? If um, Wayne Hills basketball wins this, you know, I will, I will proudly put that win on myself. I will thank myself very much. I'd like to thank the Academy, but no, absolutely. <laughs> it's been Jake Belli all night, pretty much. In the first half, you know, we didn't see a lot of him, but he was passing it around with his brother trying to create an opening. Second half comes around and we see an entirely different Jake Belli completely surpassing all odds, cutting down the deficit, taking the lead, and being the leader that Wayne Hills needed at this point. And if he can keep this up for the next five minutes, 56 seconds, then Hills is just gonna come away with a win. Hopefully we do see that. This is the first time Wayne Hills has had Somewhat of a considerable lead. I mean, three points, you know, one three pointer back in the game, Tenafly has, but I, you know, it's good to see them on top. Feels like they've been coming from behind the entire game. Really have not seen them on top. Yeah, I think Coach Grimes definitely has coached pretty well when Wayne House has been on top. They've been able to preserve their leads. Yeah, but you know, if I was Coach, Coach Grimes, I'd be equally as nervous because I remember what Vanilla does, I remember I got to keep him down. We may have the lead, but it could just as easily be lost. Defense is gonna come into key here. They really need to keep Tenafly contained. Yeah, definitely wanna you know, continue what they've been doing as their main guys have not really been getting really high, you know, high percentage shots underway. And that really allowed anything inside. They really don't have much of a perimeter shooting game. Looks like they're trying to create that. Contested shot, Wiener, he airballs it. See the Wayne Hills crowd, Wayne Hills bench getting into it. That's what you like to see. Absolutely, I mean, they're up ahead by only three, but you know what? They're, it's this close to the end. They have to get into it. If they don't get into it, there's no point in coming into this game and winning. But they're looking really good right now. You definitely want to see them keep that momentum. Maybe, you know, a big shot or two. I think that this game could definitely, you know, Start to look out of the way. Grimes calling out a play to his team. Jake Belli taking it inside. He gives it to Wills. Wills gonna reset 
up top. Now Wills driving, gives it to Belli. Belli up top now. Couple moves, he has a crossover. He's going hard inside and he's hacked underneath. He'll go to the line for two. Great, great awareness there by Joey to be able to call the foul and draw the foul out on him. He'll go to the line for two and he's one of our most consistent shooters. Yeah, he's definitely good at generating contact underneath the rim. First free throw is good. So score right now, 39-35. Hells with their biggest lead of the game. Could make it 40 here, take a five point lead. We'll see what he does. Belli shot underway and hits. <laughs> Belli perfect from the free throw line right there. 40-35, Hills with a five point lead. Lob of a pass into the corner now. <laughs> shot by Wiener and He's able to hit for three. It's 40-38. That's really good for Tenafly and really bad for Wayne Hills. If they're not careful, that could shift this momentum in a whole different way that they don't want to happen. Yeah, if you're, if you're Coach Grimes, you definitely want to you know, keep on putting points on the board. Doesn't matter how you do it. Just keep on putting the ball in the bucket. Jake Ballet taking it inside now. Kicks it back to his brother. Joey Belli now. Definitely has a size advantage. We'll see if he uses that to his advantage. Kicks it back to Jake. Belli now gives it to Wills. Wills kicks it back to Jake Belli. Belli gives it back to Wills. Wills. Ooh, he makes this guy miss. Ankles. Jake Belli with a shot underway, and he hits! Jake Belli with a huge three, timeout, 43-38, Wayne Hills on top. Hey, remember Vanilla? Yeah, because I saw him die for that one. Oh my God, that was amazing by Wills to be able to get Vanilla off him, drive into the center, and cause the defenders to crowd around him, pass it out to Jake for the easy three. Amazing team play there. And it looks like that that makes you win games. You know, able to obviously put a little flash on that play, but you got open looks like that, especially from the perimeter. You know, the more open looks you have, the more of them you're going to make. And, you know, that's what we saw right there. And that's why the scoreboard looks like it does. And coming to this game, you know, Wayne Hill's a higher ranked team. They're the higher seed. You know, the, Coach Grimes knows this. They're the more talented team. They're the, the bigger, the faster, the stronger team. And, you know, they're really starting to show it this second half. Well, you know what? They need to, honestly. Wayne Hills, honestly, if I'm going to be perfectly honest here, sure, we may not be the best team in New Jersey, but we're up there. I mean, we just won the county championship for the first time in Wayne Hills history. If they don't come in with the winner's mentality, then I'm disappointed. The fans should be disappointed. The coaching should be disappointed. And the the players should be disappointed. But you know what? They did. They did come in with the winner's mentality. They're taking the game away right when it matters. And honestly, it's going real good for them. I want them to keep going. And that's what separates championship quality teams from just average teams, your ability to finish. And we've seen, you know, lately, this Wayne Hills team is definitely good at finishing. Modak with a nice defense blocked underneath the rim. Man, is he having himself a game. Yeah, now he can put a block under him. But man, was that just a great area to put his hand up. Was able to get the block and the turnover. Modak up and in. Modak hits, 45-38. There he is again. He got the block, he got the points. Now let's see what Wayne Hills can do on defense. Vanilla looking inside and able to put it in. It's Ang Bazo. Seems like that's the first point in a while for Tenafly. 45-40 still. A bunch of moves up at the top. Belli pass it to Modak. Bodak. He has the ball now. Kicks it to Jake Belli. Jake Belli gives it to Joey. 
Hawks, under two minutes left to go in the game. Joey Belli takes it inside, and he's fouled. Joey Belli making the moves underneath the rim when it matters. And yet again, able to draw the foul. There's a minute 52 seconds left. If Hills can keep up this pace, they'll be able to win. However, remember who's on Tenafly's team. Belli sinks the first free throw. Anyway, as I was saying, remember who's on Tenafly's team. They can easily bring this back if Hills begins to slip up. We'll see what kind of approach Wayne Hills at the end of this game. I think they need to limit perimeter shots as Belli sinks both free throws. He's perfect from the line this game. 47-40, under two minutes left to go here in this game. A lot of ball movement now for Tenafly. Taking it inside and fouled by Modak. And Bozo fouled. Man, does that guy like the baseline. I feel like whenever he gets his touches, taken along the baseline. It looks like Gilmore will come in for Wills. Nice call by the Wayne Hills assistant coach. He definitely saw something that could have resulted in an open shot. Jake Bella able to get back in time and defend it. A look over at Modak, unable to hit. Gilmore fouled. So it looks like we'll see Gilmore go to the line. Minute 21 seconds left, 47-40 Hills. Well, you know what? This is going really good. It's going really good, you know. There's a minute 21 left. Hill's got the lead. He almost up for two. He can make these. We'll win this game. Gilmore, first shot up and unable to hit. You know, remember when I said he could make these? Yeah, I'm beginning to feel like this is like Dario Cerny with the field goal that I called and then immediately got blocked. I should probably just shut my mouth whenever <laughs> I say those things. The infamous jinx job. Gilmore hits that shot, 48-40 Hills. Yeah, just proving my point. Every time I shut my mouth, somebody makes a good play, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, Dylan. Shot in the corner, airballing it is Benello. Another foul on Gilmore. I mean, at this point, you never want to say, Telefly is out of it, but you know, sending Gilmore to the line again, he has a chance to make it a 10-point lead. I mean, you gotta say Tenafly's out of this game at this point. Well, you know, honestly, at this point, all they can really do is foul Hills and try to come up with something. I mean, they're gonna have to have someone become a hero here, hit some big shots. Gilmore, first shot, sinks. It's 49-40 now. Well, this one will put him up by 10. Gilmore. Sings the second shot, so we will see a 10-point lead, 50-40, with just a little over a minute left. Clock. Shot by Benello is up and not hit. Gilmore is hacked underneath. Coming up with a steal, though, is a booty. Coach Grimes is livid. Looks like the ball was in before the coach called timeout. <laughs> Man, he's not really happy with these refs this game. No, you know what? Some of the refs are on his side. Some of the refs aren't on his side. Some of the refs like Hills. Some of the refs might not like Hills. You know, there's always that argument whenever it comes to sports. Do the refs like you? And are the refs willing to punish you? But there's 58 seconds left. Hills is up by eight. They're in a really good position to just come in and win this game. I mean, at this point, all you got to do is just, you know, make sure you don't turn the ball over. Turning a ball over could be costly. I mean, you know, you don't want to give them any momentum at all because you give a team a momentum. We saw what happened last game with Hills. They'll take that momentum and run away with it. So, well, you know what? If you don't want them to have momentum, just keep the ball. Hold on to it. Waste time. Sure, Tenafly might stop you, try to draw the foul. Try to stop the clock, and just try to hold on to the ball as much as you can, waste as much time as you can, and in this game, that's it. As simple as that seems, Doc, 
We'll see if Wayne Hill is able to capitalize on that kind of game plan. I mean, all they got to do is make sure they don't turn over the ball. They send you to the free throw line. That's two easy baskets. Anyways, literally a minute left on the on the clock. Wayne Hill's up by eight. Belli fouled in the corner. So we'll see Belli go to the line. Well, speaking of Belli, but not Joey, Jake has been amazing in this game so far. Yeah, Jake is definitely having himself a great game. Belli sinks the first free throw. We'll see Gilmore come in for Wills. Wayne Hills with a nine point lead. 51 42. Belli second free throw underway. And he hits both. Belli making the big time clutch free throw buckets. And stolen by Belli. Joe Stone has the ball now. Trying to go for the foul now. Jake Belli on the ball. Jake Belli fouled. Oh man, he was swarmed by three 10 to 5 players at once. Yeah, he's definitely sworn. Good thing he's able to hold on to that ball. He'll go to the line. Not only hold on to the ball, but also waste some time with it. Yeah, it looks like he wasted a solid 10 seconds with that kind of possession. So a nice shot by him. And Jake Belli able to sink the shot, even though it's a little distraction from the crowd. Some of the 10 out of 5 fans trying to throw him off his game. Not going to happen. And Belli able to sink both shots. Crowd unable to phase him. Shot in the corner now, unable to hit, airballed. Now, a lot of action. Belli fouled again. 38 seconds left, 54 42. So at this point, I think it's pretty safe to say that we can call that this game is over, right? I mean, you can never say never, but I mean, they're up by 12 now. It'd be very difficult for Tenafi to come back. I mean, they got Steph Curry on their bench, you know, hit threes from half court, like nothing, maybe, but obviously at the high school level, it's not happening as Jake Belli sinks the first shot. Yeah, sorry, 10 to fly girls. I'm the only one that's allowed to jinx the Swain Hills team. <laughs> I am the only one that's allowed to prevent our team from scoring at all, but you know what? I'm pretty Either good at way. that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty good at it, exactly. But you know what? Jake's been dominant. If he misses one, it's not that bad. And, you know, I think he just got to hit that just to, you know, tell you that you're wrong right there. He's, he's hitting both those shots. <laughs> Contested three, unable to hit, rebounded now by Modak. And, I mean, I think they're just going to play now. I mean, game's over. Deep pass now. Looks like it's out on Hills. <laughs> Coach Kine's like, what are you doing, Jolly? You don't want to have a turnover like that, but... You know, yeah. I don't think that's going to do anything. I mean, I know you want to waste time, but there, are, there were much better passing opportunities to do that. He was just trying to feed his brother. Benilla in and out shot, rebounded now by Cerrone, and you know, 10 seconds left. It looks like it's going to be the ball game. And as the clock hits zero, 56 Patriots, 42, kind of fly. We'll see Wayne Hills go on to the next round. Pretty sure the next game is going to be Wednesday. Yeah, and you know what? This has been a really good game. You know, we start out first quarter, not a lot of scoring at all. Mainly just both defenses really coming out to play. Get into the second quarter. Tenafly takes a really big lead, humbles Wayne Hills. And then Wayne Hills comes in the entire second half and takes over. Jake, led by Jake Belli, they were able to completely take over every part of this game and win. That's all that matters. They won. And you know, we were saying the ability of this team to finish games, you know, it was definitely close at halftime. You know, they went into halftime, pretty sure they were losing. I mean, this team is surely incredible. I mean, they come up, they overcome adversity, they overcome deficits. I mean, it's just a very talented team, and I'd like to see them continue to uh, go pretty far in the state tournament. It's a very special team. Yeah, absolutely. You can hear them celebrating. They made it through their first part, and we'll see them again soon. And honestly, they came off the big win yesterday. They're coming off a really good win tonight. You know, honestly, 
this is going to be a team to really look at for the future, especially as they move on throughout the states. And that's right, Dylan. And this is definitely a, a team to be reckoned with. And, you know, I guess we'll see if they can continue to continue the special season and, you know, hopefully end with a chip. And at the Gifford, at the Gifford Gymnasium, it's been Jared Polt, Dylan Lauren King, and Alec Oppenheim on camera signing off.